we're talking about objects and I want to I want to say something about uh, how to do sort of uh, more traditional object oriented style programming with objects and how JavaScript does some of this. And I want to take uh, eventually take these ideas and the program that we wrote last time, I want to convert it to use objects. So let's talk a little bit about this. So, so far we've said that if I have an object, let's say a user, that I can define an object by using this notation. I can do a, an object literal. And we said that we can do things like add key value pairs. So I can say that the user's first name is um, whatever, first, last name is last, etc. And we said that we can put any kind of data we want in here. So for example, is logged in, false, stuff like this. We can put booleans, we can put numbers, you know, um, the user's age, you know, are they, they're 19, whatever. So we can have strings, we can have booleans, we can have numbers, we can, we can have more complex types, we could have, um, you know, maybe they have a list of, I don't know what, but some kind of a list that's attached to their, a list of numbers, their favorite numbers, one, two, three, four. So that, that works. Um, any kind of type that you can put on an object, you can, you can, you can put here. Um, so, you know, we might, we might even want to put a more complex set of types on here. Like maybe a user has a set of preferences. So they have a set of preferences and the preferences themselves are an object. And so inside preferences, you know, they have a preference for a particular color. They have a, a preference for, I don't know, the width of the window, etc. So we can create pretty complex objects where within we can have layers of objects these tree of objects and so on we can use any sort of type we can have we can have keys in here that are um you know they're not filled out yet so for example maybe a user has a score and right now they have never played so their score is null we can do that so that's not a problem i want to put a key in but i don't want to put a value in all sorts of ways that we can put uh, we can put data on this thing. And we also talked about the fact that we can update this later on. So I can say that a user's score is equal to 43, for example. And so when I'm defining the key value pair like this, I use a colon. And I say that the key name, this is the value for the key name when I'm defining it inside of an object literal like this. And then later on, if I want to update it, I use the equal sign like this to be able to update it and say I want to I want to set uh, user.score equal to 43. Now, another thing that we're used to having in other object-oriented languages is not only do we want to put the data in the object, but we also want to put functionality with the data. So the idea is that we would have data and methods that operate on the data. So functions that operate on the object or on the data, we call those methods. We need a way to define methods in JavaScript. So how do we do that? Well, we have a couple of ways we can do it. So one of the things we can do, and maybe this is going to be obvious to you, maybe it's not going to be obvious to you, is that we can put functions onto these objects. So a user has a score, and let's say um, that we want to allow the user to log in. So we decide to put a login function onto this object. So I'm going to say login is function like so. And I'm going to say is logged um, this dot is logged in is equal to true like that so here what i have is i have a function expression i'm 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 going to bind this function to the function object that i get back is going to get bound to the login key in this object how would i call the login function so i'd have to reach for the user reference and then inside the user reference, I would go and get the key for login. And if I did nothing else right now, that would return to me, it would re return to me the function object. So 
I would get back the function object. And if I want to call the function, I have to do this. I would have to uh, invoke the function. Up here, you can see that I have been able to reference the object that I am working on here by using this. So we're going to use the keyword this as a way to refer to the, this is a little bit slippery in JavaScript, but in, in essence, this means the owner of this function. So the object that, uh, that this uh, function is sitting on, in other words, the user object right here that we want to be able to work with. If I wanted to put a logout function on this, I could do one of two things. I could either go here and put logout as a function, like I could do that, but I could also put, I could say user.logout equals function, and I could say this logged in equals false, like that. So I can either define functions when I create the object, like this, or I can define, def define functions afterward when I do something like this. This will work as well, okay? And these functions, you in JavaScript, you can move them around like any other kind of variable. So if I had another object, let user2, what would it mean if I said user2.login is equal to user.login? So what, what's happening here? Well, let's do something a little simpler. What if I said user2.firstName is equal to user.firstName? What would that do? This is going to take the user object. It's going to reach in and get the first name property and then get the value associated with that. And then it's going to assign it as a new value at the key first name inside user2. Hopefully that makes sense. It's like copying a variable across. I'm just copying it from one property into another property of another object. But what happens if the thing that I'm copying is a function? The best way to think about functions in JavaScript is to think about them like numbers or strings or anything else. They are just this piece of data that you can pass around. They're like any other object. So when I say user2.login equals user.login, if I said user2.login, I could actually call that function. That would work. So I can define methods on objects like so in order to put these together. Now, another thing that we're gonna want from you know, experiences working with other traditional object-oriented programming languages is you're gonna look for constructors. So for example, let's say that I had another user in my system. I, I wanna make another one of these users. And so what am I, what am I gonna do? Let user two is equal to first name is equal to first name two, last name is equal to last name to etc. This is this is going to get tedious. So JavaScript lets us create objects with basically no structure. Like we can define our own structure, and that's a hundred percent fine to do. It's not something you will do in a lot of other languages where at the beginning, when you compile your program, you need to have a template that says this is what my objects are going to look like. Here's my class. This is the definition, this is the type, this is the schema for how my objects are gonna work at runtime. In JavaScript, we're just saying, well, here's how the object looks right now. It's just a collection of key value pairs, and I might add more later, I might take some away. It's very loose. But sometimes you're gonna write programs where you're gonna to wanna to create lots and lots of objects that have the same shape, or they have the same set of properties on them. So if a user always has a certain number of things on it, it's often really helpful for me to be able to write a constructor function. So here's how you do that in JavaScript. We already know how to write a function, and I'm going to write a function, and the only thing I'm going to do different at the beginning here is I'm going to use a convention, which is instead of using a lowercase letter, I'm going to use an uppercase letter. So whenever you see an uppercase letter in JavaScript like this, you in your head, you should say to yourself, okay, this is most likely a constructor function. And you've actually seen some of these before. So take a look at this. Let list equals new array. Let regular expression equals new 
regular expression, right? What's going on here? Well, whenever you see that capital letter is the first letter of the word, it's a hint that likely the thing that we're about to work with is a constructor function. So I'm gonna make a, a constructor function user. Now in the most basic case, that's a constructor function right there. And the way that you invoke a constructor function is with the new keyword. So if I was gonna say let user equals new user, like so, that's how I would call my constructor function. So, I, so, so far I haven't done much that's different. I've created a function. Instead of calling it user with a lowercase u, I've done the uppercase u. And actually there's no difference. The program will work in both ways, but this is just a hint to other developers that this is a constructor function. And when I invoke this function, I pass this new keyword in front of it. And what it's gonna do is it's going to create a new instance for me. So let's, let's add a little more to our constructor function because we know, for example, that all of our, um, all of our users are gonna have a first name and a last name, let's say. So let's pass those in as arguments. So let's say, uh, I'm gonna say F name and L name are two uh, pieces of data that I wanna pass in. So if I was gonna do me, I would say Dave uh, and Humphrey like this. So I would pass those pieces of data in. And what I'm gonna do is I want to hang on to that, I wanna hang on to this data here much like I did down here. So when I was defining an object in this raw format with an object literal, I, I placed the data onto the keys like so. First name is this, last name is this. What I wanna do here is I want to place this data onto my object instance. So user is going to be an instance of this user constructor. And because I pass new, what it's going to do is it's gonna generate an object for me. We'll talk more about this. So I can access that object by referring to this. So if I say this dot first name equals F name, this dot last name equals last name, I can do that. And I could even have these things share the same names if that is something you wanna do. So I could say first name and this is equal to last name like so. So I'm saying take the argument first name that was passed to me on the constructor function and attach it to the object using the key first name, right? And there's other things we could do in the constructor. There's some pieces of data where we don't need to define it in the constructor. We can provide default values. So a constructor is really helpful because one of the things it lets me do is it lets me set defaults for a whole bunch of data so that my object has all of the data that I would expect it to have for me to do my work. So for example, this dot is logged in equals false. So maybe by default, you know, you're not logged in. And we might want to be able to pass the age in here. So we say this dot age is equal to age. So some things we pass in, some things we don't pass in. Preferences, this dot uh, preferences is equal to an object and the preferences object is, you know, has a bunch of defaults on it. So another, you know, here we could say, for example, color, color is equal to red and screen width is equal to 1024, something like that. Okay. Now we could decide which of these things we're gonna pass in and which of them we're gonna set as defaults, right? As we're going down and working to this, the score, maybe the score, this dot score starts out at zero, something like that. So now when I create a new user, it's really easy for me to create a user. So, you know, um, whatever data I wanna pass in, I wanna pass in here, let's say, you know, let's say, let's say, we wanna have let user two, new user, uh, Frank Lee, and let, let user three, new user, um, Jen, uh, Jen Smith, etc. So we have a bunch of users, we're creating them based on a template and every one of these users is automatically gonna have this information attached to them. 
So if I wanted to get, you know, user, my first user, if I wanted to get their score, I would be able to access their score like this, or I would be able to set their score like this. I can, I can attach all this information to it. Okay, so far so good. Now, the next thing that we talked about is being able to do things like this login here, right? So let's do that here. So let's say this dot is, uh, or this dot login is equal to a function and this function is gonna set this dot is logged in true. This dot log out is equal to a function like that. So that means that all of these users also have these methods. So I could say user2.login, user3.login, user2.logout, etc. I can reach into the object and I can call a series of methods that and all of these all of these uh, objects are going to have uh, instances of these. So let's say I, in my program, you know, um, I have lots of users. New user, um, Ed, Woo, etc. So I've got all kinds of these instances of these objects, and every time I create an object, what I'm doing is I'm I'm having to put all of this into memory. So I have 999 of these, and they all have the same data. Now you start looking at this, and you say, you know what? These methods for every single user that we're creating, they're the same. They're they're I, they're functionally identical. I'm not I don't have any code in here that's specific to this user versus another user. So JavaScript provides a way for us to be able to share things between instances. JavaScript uses a, a type of inheritance known as prototypes. So let me show you how this works. Every time that we say we want to create a new instance of, we want to create a new instance of the user constructor, what new actually means is Create me an instance of the prototype for the user. So what, what on earth is that? Every time JavaScript makes an object, what it does is it makes a duplicate copy of another object, the prototype. So the prototype is a template for creating an object. And so what we can do is we can put things on the prototype, and then every time we make a new instance of an object, JavaScript will be able to sort of access all of that because the object is linked to its prototype. How do we work with the prototype? So if I wanna put something on the prototype, what I do is I, I specify the constructor function, user, and then I say dot prototype. So this lets me get access to the prototype of this constructor function. So this is the object that it exists on. And now I can put things on there. So for example, I could say dot login is equal to function this dot is logged in equals true user dot prototype log out is equal to a function and this dot is logged in equals false. So that means that these functions, which used to live on the instance, so they were, they were placed on this, which means if I make 999 objects based on this constructor, I'm gonna have 999 versions of this function in memory. It's not, you know, it's maybe not a lot, but if you think about a big program, you're gonna start to create all kinds of objects and you're gonna have all kinds of things in memory. and Every single one of them has a duplicate copy of the same tiny little program, this function method. So what if we just took these off of the instance, we got rid of them from the instance, and instead we put them onto the prototype. So they aren't going on this, they're going on user.prototype, that's where they're gonna live. So they're gonna live on the, the, the template for this object. 
So when you now do something like this, when you say user2.login, what JavaScript is going to do is, JavaScript is going to try and find something called login on the instance. It's not going to find it because there is no such key as login on this instance. And so when it can't find it on the instance, it's going to go up a level to the prototype. So it's going to go back and it's going to look, it's going to move across this prototype chain. So as these objects, each object has a prototype, it's going to keep going back in a lot of ways, similar to what we did with scope chain. And it's going to look for something called login. And when it finds it on the prototype, it's going to execute it there. So it says, okay, I found this, so I can now call this function there. When it does that, it's going to be able to access the instance via this. So even though we're on the prototype, we still have access to the instance, the particular object that we're working with. So if we're working with user two versus user three, that's an instance. And so we can access the instance when we um, talk about using this. So this dot logged in equals, uh, equals false. So just to be clear, if I said um, user dot, you know, login equals function, whatever, I'm putting that only on this instance here. That object would get it, but none of the rest of them. If I put it onto the prototype here like this, then every single one of these that has ever been created in the past or every single one of these that will be created in the future, all of them are going to get them. So this is something that you can do. Um, well, let me show you, let me show you an example. If I pop up, uh, let me run node here. Um, so if we have a string, um, the string type, String is a function or array. Array is a function. So these are constructor functions, right? And if I say that I have a list, um, let list is equal to a new array, uh, array one, two, three. So list is an array. And if I say list dot, um, let's say for each, where did for each come from? So really what's happening here is array.prototype.foreach that's where that function lives. It lives not on the instance. It doesn't live on um, list. It lives on the prototype of an array. So we put it one level higher than the instance. It's, it's on this template object on the prototype object. And we do that so that it gets shared amongst all, uh, uh, it gets shared amongst all of the different instances. Same with a string. So if I have a string, I say, you know, let S equals hello world. S is a string. And if I were to look at string.prototype, so first of all, S.2 uppercase, like so. Where did two uppercase come from? It's not really on S, it's not on the instance, it's on string dot prototype dot uh, two uppercase. That's the function, that's where it lives. And when you, when you say S dot two uppercase, you are calling this instance, you're calling it on the, on the prototype up above. So when we're working in JavaScript, we really, we work with functions and we don't have a lot of the same machinery that you have in C++ and other languages, but we can achieve the same, the same results by using functions and these prototype chains to be able to put things at different levels along, along the way. Okay. So let me try and let's, um, Let's do something with some constructors and methods and so on. I, I wanted to revisit this program that we were working on last time. So last time we wrote a program where we took a comma separated values text file. And this 
um, this has, let's say, customer information. So a customer has an ID number, customer has a name, customer has a telephone number, and a customer has a height, okay? And the height, and height needed to be normalized. We did a bunch of work to work between centimeters and inches. Um, we needed to clean up the names, et cetera, et cetera. So what I'd like to do right now is I'd like to model this data by creating some uh, constructors and creating some objects to deal with some of the some of the data. So let's start out with the phone number right here. So I'm going to create a uh, a phone number constructor. So I'm going to say function phone number. You'll notice that I'm using a capital P, not a lowercase p here. And in my constructor, I'm going to pass in the, let's just call it value. I'll pass in the value, the phone number value. And I'm going to put uh, the phone number onto, um, I'll put the phone number onto here. So I'll say this dot value is equal to value like that. So one of the things we did in our code last time was we were interested in extracting the first three numbers from this. We wrote a function here called extract area code like this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with that, but I'm going to, I'm going to use it slightly differently. So I, I would like to be able to use a phone number like this. I'd like to be able to say let phone number equals new phone number. And I'd like to be able to pass in a phone number like this as a string. And then I'd like to be able to say phone number dot get area code like that. I'd like to be able to say something like, you know, let area code equals, and I'd like to be able to pull the area code off of the object. So how would I write code like this? So what I need to do is I need to, I'm going to rename this to get area code. And instead of passing in a number here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this function onto the phone number constructors prototype like so. So I'm going to, I'm going to specify that all phone numbers have a get area code method. It's a method because it's a function. So that's all a method is in, in JavaScript. So now what else do we need to modify here? Let matches equals the phone number, and then we do a match on this string. Well, the phone number is stored on the instance at this dot value. So what I'm going to do is, in order to make my code work nicely here, I'm going to just say let phone number equals this dot value. So I'm just going to grab the phone number off of the instance, and I'll put it into phone number like this, and I'll, I'll use it down here. If I wanted to, I could also say this dot value dot match. That would work too. But I've already got this code written using phone number like this, so why don't I just keep it? Keep it the same. So I have a phone number, and a phone number lets me write code like this. OK, what else do we have in here? We have a height. So what if we wrote a constructor function to deal with heights, to be able to format them and parse them? And we took the idea of a height, and we created an object to deal with that. All right, what would it what would it look like to do that? So let's say we have a constructor function height again. It's uppercase. Let's say that we want to deal in inches. So we want whatever happens, we want the, to be passed a height in inches. And how do I want to use my height? I might, I'd like to be able to say let height equals a new height. I'd like to pass in a number. Um, you know, whatever the number of, of inches is, uh, you know, 32, 54, whatever the number of, of inches is like this, and it gets stored inside of this object. And then I would also like to be able to say let height 2 is equal to, and I'd like to be able to parse a height from a string. So I'd like to be able to write code like this, height.parse, and then give a string like, 
54 inches. I'd also like to be able to do something like this. I'd like to be able to say, um, you know, 134 centimeters. So I'd like my code to work a number of ways. I want my constructor to take a number, but I'd also like to have this special pars method and the pars method is going to accept a string. And once you have one of these heights, you can always print out the height by saying something like console.log height. And what I want that to do is I want that to give me a, a really nice looking string that would look something like, um, you know, like 54 inches like this. So I need a method that will format my height object into a string. All right, so let's, let's go through this and tackle the problems that we have to solve. So the first one is I need to store this value in inches onto my height. So I'm going to say this dot inches is equal to inches like that. Now, last time when we did the get area code, we put the area code onto the prototype for this constructor function. And I want to show you with this one a slightly different way of working with these functions. So take a look at what I'm doing here that's a little bit different. Instead of calling a function on an instance, I want to be able to call a function on the type. So we sometimes call these static methods. So the idea that um, I, have a, I have a function that I can call, it doesn't live on an instance, it lives on height itself. How do I do that? Well, I can say height dot pars is equal to a function, uh, function and it takes in a value like so. So I'm gonna use the prototype sometimes when I wanna share things between all the instances. And other times I'm gonna put things onto like the constructor function, which is a weird idea because I'm putting a function onto a function. So in JavaScript, what is a function? A function is an object. Objects can have key value pairs. I'm creating a key and a value, and I'm putting it onto this object. So it seems weird, but it's gonna allow me to write code like this. Okay, so let's do the following. So let's say we need to convert this into a value in inches, because what I really want is to be able to call my constructor. So I'm gonna define inches, and I'm gonna say if the value ends with inches, then I can just use it. So I can say inches is equal to pars float inches. I'm just gonna grab, so for example here, I would grab the number 54 off of this. Else, if it's centimeters, I'm, I should do more error handling here and everything, but I'm gonna keep this, I don't want this code to get too big. So I'm gonna say if it's not the case, then I'm gonna say inches is equal to pars float value and because that's a value in centimeters, I'm gonna multiply it by 0 0.39 in order to convert it into a value in inches. Now what I have is I have, instead of this string here, or this string here, I have a number. I have 54 or I have 134 converted to, to inches. So what I wanna do at this point is I want to call my constructor function and create a new height object. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna say, return new height, and I'm gonna pass in my value like this. So that means when I call height.pars, it's going to return an instance of height, the same way as if I call new height 54 here, and I pass it in this other piece of data. So I'm showing you this because the way that we create, the way that we create, func we create instances, sometimes we call constructor functions, Sometimes we call other functions which call constructor functions and lots and lots of things can return objects to us. The, the neat thing about the height object is it's gonna allow me to put some other things on it. So for example, this whole thing about formatting. I want to format this value right here. So let's think about this. I could, I could say this dot to string is equal to a function. So take my height and convert it to a string. And I could say here, return a string. 
and I'm going to return um, this this dot inches. So get the the value that is stored on the height, and let's trim it to two decimal places. Let's turn it into a string that only has two decimal places. And then let's put inches on the end. So we're going to so basically I want to return 100 and or 54 inches, something like that, or 54.31 inches. That's what I want to return whenever you call to string. So that would mean down here when I want to get a string, I could say let s equals height dot to string. That would work. Or when I call console.log and it needs to convert it to a string, it will call to string automatically. Now what we said before was every time we create a height, it's going to make a duplicate copy of this function over and over and over for all those instances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this off of the instance and I'm going to put it on height dot pro height dot prototype instead of on this so now my height constructor takes a value in inches and stores it but it also has these other methods it has a method to convert that to a string and i also have this extra um, parse functionality that i've placed on the constructor to help it's like a helper function to create an instance of to create an instance of this okay great so i have a phone number and i have a height let's do one more let's make a customer So let's think about what a customer needs to have. Here's an example of a customer. Customer. Okay, so what do they have? A customer has an ID, a name, a phone number, and a height. And this data is going to come in as strings. We're just going to pass it in as raw strings. So let's store all this data on a customer object. So this dot ID is equal to ID. So that's going to take care of storing the ID number. If we look at our data, let me pull this data down here so we can see what's going on. All right, so we said that, um, I think we wrote code, we did, we wrote code before to remove extra white space on a name, on a name, on a telephone number, etc. cetera. So let's, let's use that here. So let's say this.name equals remove extra white space on name. Let's do the same thing for the phone number. This dot phone number equals remove extra white space on the phone number, except that what I really want to do is I don't just want to store this string. I want to create a new instance of my phone number class. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say, let's make a new phone number and we'll pass it in the phone number, removing any extra white space. The last thing we need to do is we need to do the height. Height is equal to, so we have the height. We need to remove the extra, extra white space from the height. And we wrote this nice function here, height.parse. So let's call it here. So height.parse, we parse out what's going on here in this in our object. So what we've done now is we've taken all the data, the raw data, and we've 
we've made it more usable. We've made it easier to use in other parts of my program. So let's just modify our program below to use what we just created here. So what don't we need? We no longer need to normalize the height. We've already done that in our other code. And let's remind ourselves how this program works. So we're gonna take the CSV data and we're gonna call process CSV. We're gonna split it into rows, split it into rows, and then we're going to call, excuse me, we're gonna call uh, row to fields. So we wanna change this. Row to fields currently takes the data and splits it at the comma, creating all of these different uh, ID, name, phone number. And then we have each one of these fields here that um, we're extracting from fields to row. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say row to customer because what I wanna do is I wanna, I wanna return a customer object, not a field customer. All right, so let's let's change our code to make this work. So I'm going to I'm going to take so basically what we're going to have here is we're going to have um, an ID, a name, a phone number, and uh, a height. Like we're going to have the data in an array after we do the split. So I'm going to say let customer equals new customer and I'm going to pass all this data in so I'm going to pass in fields at zero fields at one fields at two which is the phone number and fields at three like so and I can delete all of this and then I can return the customer. And whenever you see yourself doing this, whenever you see yourself creating a variable and then returning it, like in other words, I never do anything with this variable. There's no point in having a variable. So what I can do is instead of saying return customer, I can get rid of that. I can get rid of this and I can just move this here to the end of the line here like that. Right? Get rid of the equal sign. So I'm gonna return a new customer, fields at zero, fields at one, fields at two, fields at three. So let's change the name of this a little bit. So I'm gonna get back a list of customers and I wanna print out those customers. So we print out the raw data and then console.log, I'll print out like a line and then print out the customers. So let's see if this works. Yes, this is working. It's not very pretty, it's just printing out my object, object, object. So I have those objects here, my customer object. Let's do something else with the, with the object. Um, Okay, so why don't we, instead of printing out the customers like this, why don't I say customers equal this, and I'll say customers dot for each. Let's console dot log the customer's name and their height. How about that? So I'm gonna say customer dot uh, name and customer dot height, like that. Save this. And what have I got here? Customers dot, oh, I must be returning the wrong thing. Give me one second. Oh yeah, 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 sorry, I need to return. I'm Right now I'm, I'm turning all these customers into, um, I'm, I'm rejoining it together. I just wanna return, return this. Uh, array rather than joining it together. There we go. And let's um, console.log, I'll print out customers as well. So here's, here's what we get back. So my array now looks like this. I have 
an array of customer objects. Each customer object has all of the data that I expect to have in it, a name, a phone number, and so on. But I have this much richer set of data because I've been able to put things together as objects. Now, right now, we're not writing, we're not writing a lot of code using this data, but it's so much easier to work with customer.name rather than fields at three or something like that. My code reads a lot better. I wanna go through each of my customers and I wanna print out their name and their height, and maybe I wanna print out the customer's um, area code. So I call get area code and Customers, oh, whoops, customer. Customer.getAreaCode is not a function. What did I do wrong? Let's just figure this out. Uh, oh, because yes, the getAreaCode lives on the prototype of the phone number the phone number is stored on customer.phone number. So let's just fix that. So it'd be customer.phone number dot get area code like that. There we go. So now it's printing out the name. I have the height. I have, um, I think the height we defined to string. Let's call uh, this dot inches dot two fixed is not a function. All right, let's figure out why it doesn't like my it doesn't like my this dot. So you can see here it's failing on line sixty three of index dot js. So if we go up here to line sixty three. It's unhappy with me saying that to fixed is not a function. What did I do wrong? So if I console.log this dot inches, let's try this and just see what it does. 62 inches. So it looks like it's already a number. Uh, return new height. I wonder if, yes, it's already a string. So what am I doing wrong here? Oh, oh, yes. So I'm passing in value and I am setting inches, but then I'm using value instead of inches. So this should be inches. And then I won't need this. So there, <laughs> we're closer, but look at this. We still have a bug. We have not, not a number. So John Smith, not a number. John Smith, not a number. So this, this is wrong. So look at here. I am, I have the wrong argument here. This should be value. So let's try this again. There, that worked. So now I'm getting all my data, my data back again. So I'll pause it there and I wanted to I wanted to show you what it looks like when we when we work with a constructor function, how we how we share methods between instances by using the prototype, how we can do static methods like this, like putting something on the constructor on height the same way you would have a class method to be able to do this, how we call into this, how we use the new keyword in order to invoke and, and make use of these. And then once we've done that, how much easier it is to work with our code when we can say things like customer.name, customer.height, or phone number .get area code. Our, our programs start to become more self-documenting in the way that they read. So we're gonna work a ton with objects. Getting used to this style of programming, this object-oriented style is gonna be really important because in a few weeks, we're gonna start migrating into the browser. And when we work with um, JavaScript in the browser, 
you're going to be working with a massive set of pre-existing objects and methods and you're also going to be building your own and so this style of work we're going to do a ton of it so i want you to have some exposure to it read through the notes this week You've got an assignment this week to uh, help you focus on understanding how it works. Make sure you get lots of practice with it and you ask questions about any of the pieces of it that don't make sense.